New York, in addition to Newark, 3,000 young men from grades six through 12, and uh, 1,500 alum who've gone off to colleges and universities all over the country. We created the Eagle Academy as a response to the, the, uh, the crisis that so many of our families find themselves in as relates particularly to our sons and all of the pressures uh, that society places on young men and young men of color. Uh, and we decided to do something about that. And that's the reason why we created the Eagle Academy um, and the foundation supports all of our schools. Um, I first of all, I wanna clap it up tonight, first of all, because at seven o'clock, uh, it has become a, uh, a ritual uh, for everyone, wherever we are, to at least give a, a shout out and a clap for all of the healthcare workers who are on the front lines and trying to, um, trying to respond to this, this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, we can't thank them enough, those who are putting their lives on the line to try and help each and every one of us. Um, so we wanna thank them and we wanna clap it up for them and ask that you join me in doing that. Um, but today is the second installment <clears throat> of this conversation that we're having with our community. We were asked by parents and families in our community uh, to provide a, a word and hopefully a word of, of, of hope and inspiration and information um, to help our people as they're continuing to fight through uh, this crisis. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be here uh, with you tonight. Um, as you are participating in this conversation, we ask that you, uh, you use the hashtags virtual village and hashtag uh, EAFNYC. Uh, text your friends, let them know that you're on. There's a great conversation that's happening. We invite you to uh, post your questions uh, as we're having this conversation and we'll try to get to several of them um, throughout uh, this evening. And so without further ado, I'm thrilled really to be able to introduce um, two just absolute superstars um, in their field. I'm joined by Dion Graham, Grayman and Dr. Angela Moses for a community conversation on mental health. Uh, Dion Grayman is a staff developer for the Morningside Center for Teaching Social Responsibility, where she provides training and coaching support to administrators and staff on the implementation of restorative practices and on having difficult conversations about race. She's a co-founder of NYC Public, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering New York City's public school parents, as well as the co-founder of Mothers Empowered. Um, she has done a tremendous amount. She's got all kinds of degrees. She has been impacting our community in a huge way. Um, but I will tell you that probably nothing is more important to her than the fact that she is the mother of three amazing children, two young men, Sean and Silas, and a teenage daughter, Sonia. Uh, Dion, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Banks, for having me. Thank you. I pre appreciate you being here. <laughs> and we're also joined by Dr. Angela Moses, who hails from Baltimore, Maryland, and is an author, therapist, and ordained minister. Dr. Moses holds a doctorate degree in counseling and a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. She facilitates uh, trainings, workshops, seminars, and lectures on youth, family, and social development for schools, churches, and nonprofit organizations. She is all of that. We are thrilled that she is here. But again, she is also the proud single mom of Janae and Jalia, two Ivy League college graduates who are currently enrolled in doctoral programs. Welcome, Dr. Moses. Thank you so much, Mr. Banks. So glad to be here with you. We got two bad sisters here with us. And so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get started with this. And I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of questions that are coming in. Dr. Moses, I think I'm gonna start with you and just want you to help us kind of frame this this the reason why we're here today. We, we did this conversation last week and so many of our parents, the questions and the comments that came in were really about what about mental health? I feel like I'm going crazy. Now, I feel like sometimes like the walls are closing in. People are in a very unusual situations right now and they need help. But first of all, helping us understand what is mental health when people talk about mental health? You know, what's the difference between stress, anxiety, depression? Um, what's good anxiety, what's, what's unhealthy anxiety, just kind of help set the context for us when people talk about mental health. Sure, Ms. <laughs> good evening, everyone. So we're going through change that was so unexpected and no time to prepare. Namely, at uh, this point, most of us need a checkup from the neck up. So mm. when we're talking about uh, behavioral health, we're really talking about things that we call 
uh, mind disorders such as stress, anxiety, and fear. Um, uh, my colleague taught me something called ants, A-N-T-S. And she said, sometimes ants are crawling around in your head. And that just means automatic negative thoughts, automatic negative thoughts. And with this COVID-19, there are so many negative thoughts going through our head. So some of us have had to deal with sickness, death, stress, anxiety, and fear. So uh, stress is just pressure and tension. Anxiety is worry and nervousness and uneasiness. And fear is that unpleasant emotion that causes us to believe that there is just clear and present danger at all times. Mm -hmm. So tonight we wanna just talk a little bit around this whole mental health and behavior. Uh, all of us are in a state of acute traumatic stress, all of us. Uh, vicariously, uh, we have witnessed uh, on the news and we're hearing trauma through the media. Um, if not that, we are supporting others that are going through, supporting those that have lost loved ones and you yourself. Uh, they have been isolated or are isolated or even sick or even sick. And uh, when people feel that there's no happy way to get through this, it causes all kinds of psychosis that come along and people become determined to end their suffering sometimes in detrimental ways. So we're gonna talk tonight, uh, I'd like to talk tonight about emotional intelligence. Yes, thank you, thank you. And we're gonna come back to you in just a moment because I want you to get into that and the whole notion about emotional um, intelligence as a response to the, the stress, the anxiety and the fears that we, that we feel and that so many of our people are feeling. Um, Dion, you know, when, when a parent, you know, we deal with a lot of our parents, a lot of our adults and folks who are mothering and fathering their children in our community. Um, and they say, I think I need help, but I, I don't know, where, where, do, where do I even start? What, what behaviors should I look out for that, that signal a shift, you know, in mental health for me or my children? Um, you know, what are those... What are those guideposts? What are those signals? What are the things that people should be looking out for that may indicate that they are in some significant uh, challenge? So I think um, just acknowledging that like at this time, as the world has tremendously shifted, as Dr. Moses said in such a relatively quick time that we're all under duress, right? We're all experiencing um, anxiety, tension, fear, um, uh, um, uncomfortable with not knowing what's coming next. So like we're all feeling that. And at the same time, we're all in this process of mourning, right? So, so there's a whole way of life that just three weeks ago we had or four weeks ago we had that we no longer have. And so we're all, we're all mourning. So I think that there are other things that normally attend grief and loss, right? So there's, there's sadness. Um, there may be feeling like, I don't wanna get out of bed today. Um, and I think some of the behaviors that are happening during this time are a normal part of grieving. And we should just, you know, we should accept that that's a normal way to grieve, right? Mm -hmm. um, for, 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 for extreme cases, right? So days of not wanting to get out of bed, um, being, um, if you're exhibiting that your child is a little more clingy than usual, right? Um, if you or your child are experiencing a lot of sleeplessness, right? Like, like those are things that we want to look for. Loss of appetite, like mm -hmm. those are things that we that we want to look for. Um, but one, there is what's normal, what 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 might be an, uh, an ordinary part of of grief and loss, um, and then there are the extremes. And Dr. Moses is probably much better than I um, able to speak to the extremes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. Moses, why don't you help us understand what some of those extremes and then some of your responses, you talked about emotional intelligence and how we utilize that to kind of respond to and deal with uh, our stress, our anxiety, our fears. Mm -hmm. and, and the truth is, as a people, um, Mr. Banks, we have always been under some type of stress, always been under. So this is, stress is not new to us as a people. It's just this, has, this stress has come a very different way and uh, moving very fast and very quickly. 
And that part of it, we are not used to. But as a people, we have had stressors that come in and out of our life. And we're going to get through this. Um, and we're going to have more stress in and out of our life. This is not the last time. Um, it's just that this one, we were not prepared for. And to watch so many people leave us has put us in, uh, in trauma and traumatic stress. So uh, emotional intelligence, I like to talk about real quickly, is mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the capacity to recognize and take control of your emotions. Take control of your emotions. Um, because a lot of what we're going through physically, we cannot do anything about. But what we can do about is how we respond to what we're going through on an emotional level. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there are four chemicals in the brain that affect happiness and reduces pain and boost pleasure. Four chemicals in the brain that will do that. And those chemicals, guys, are um, dopamine, uh, oxy uh, coded. Oh, oxytoxin, sorry, <laughs> uh, <laughs> endorphins, and serotonin. And those, brain, those uh, chemicals are released when we can think happy thoughts, when we can get in a peaceful place. Um, these are automatic chemicals so that we can get our own high within ourselves. Um, so that we don't have to turn, because when we look at some of the things that were mentioned, um, when we look at depression, people that are depressed think, let me go get a drink. If I can get a drink, I'll feel better. <laughs> but the problem is that alcohol is a downer. There's some drugs and things that are uppers, but alcohol is a downer. So if you're already depressed and you take alcohol, it's going to worsen what you are going through. For those of us that have people that love libations in, their fam in our families, you know once they get drunk, they're going to start crying because of the downer. If they don't start crying, they're going to tell all the family secrets, Mr. Banks. And, so, and then the fights break out. So I thought that was just my family. No. <laughs> we all got those stories. Uh -huh. Our job is to get our thought process in the right perspective so that the body will automatically release, release the chemicals so that we don't go into depression, so that we don't go into anxiety. So emotional intelligence, intelligence is more important than ever dealing with, uh, when we're ever dealing with change, uncertainty, and ambiguity. So, and then there's a, some things that we can do um, to help us to get to that place where we are feeling better behaviorally. And the first, right. and the first mm -hmm. thing is we got to take care of ourselves. Okay. You know, you're getting on the airplane. They said, put the mask on yourself and then the mask on your child because you can't do anything if you're not going to first take care of yourself. So, you know, as a minister, I believe that man is physical, man is spiritual, man is emotional, man is emotional. So we uh, have to get in tune with our spiritual nature. Everybody has a spiritual nature or some sense of spirituality. And when you can't rely on the physical flesh, you have to be able to rely on something else, which is usually your higher power or whatever your spiritual nature is. It's very important, mm -hmm. it's very important. So you, when we take care of ourselves, um, you'll crave activities to help you relax, uh, and everybody, when you're craving activities to help you relax, everybody's craving is different. So what relaxes me may not relax you. Some right. people may say, I get relaxed cooking in a kitchen. Okay, that's not my story. Some people may get relaxed, as we were talking earlier, about listening to music. And I like to just sing out loud wherever I am. That relaxes me. Sure. Also, what really works is deep breathing because our brains are not getting enough oxygen when we are stressed out. So uh, if you don't mind, we could take 30 seconds and I can teach you how to deep breathe. You can mm. do it all day, doesn't cost nothing, anywhere you are. So you just inhale through your nose for mm -hmm. four, hold it for four, and you exhale for eight through your mouth. You know so what we're gonna do? Inhale, inhale through your nose. We, we're, gonna do, we're gonna do that to okay. close, as part of our close out okay. session. Okay. Because because that mm -hmm. I think is really really important. Okay. Sure. Um, but I don't want to I don't want I don't want to get so relaxed that you know I mess around I go to sleep on you. 
out here. But but let me ask you this, right? So, and I'm gonna and I'm I'm loving this conversation and the information that we're sharing. You know, when I think about this, you know, um, like practical on the ground. You got mama. She's got she's home in a two bedroom apartment, right? She may be in in public housing. She doesn't have a backyard to go to. They're telling everybody stay in the house. Um, and and she's like, I I think I really do want to drink, right? I need something that's gonna relax me. How do I get? How does how do we help her? Or what should that mom do who's feeling completely overwhelmed? She's not just on a break. She lost her job. She got furloughed, right? When this thing is over, she does not necessarily even have a job to go back to. She's very concerned. She's dealing with all that. She can't help the uh, struggling helping these kids with their homework. Overwhelmed. Talk to her. How do you help her to have happy thoughts? How do you help that mom who I just painted that picture for? Kind of help to find herself in that inner that inner spirit. Uh, I would suggest. That well, hold on, yeah, hold on, Doctor Mose. I was I want I was asking Dion first, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna double back over. Yeah. <laughs> um, so first, let's let's deal with the. So uh, Doctor Moses gave us. So in in the work that that I do, we talk about um, using a medicine wheel, right? And it mm -hmm. talks about that we we exist in four different four different planes, right? So, so mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. So what are we doing to take care of ourselves in each of those planes as Dr. Moses was talking about? And, this, and, and the same example, when you travel by um, airplane, they always say, if you're traveling with someone that you're responsible for, make sure you put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you put it on your children or someone that you're, you're traveling with that you have to take responsibility for. Um, so as, as mothers, as black women, right, we have been conditioned to be strong, right? And, and, and to be strong means that we don't talk about the ways in which we hurt, the ways in which um, we feel vulnerable, right? We don't get to be tired. We don't get to have breakdown. So, so the things that you're talking about now are not behaviors <laughs> that we're allowed to have mm -hmm. or experience. So recognizing that, <clears throat> the example that was given to me was <clears throat> a lot of the times when we talk about pouring out to people, mm -hmm. <clears throat> take your time. We take from the cup. <clears throat> we can only pour from a place of abundance, and that's what pours over into the saucer. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> Sorry. So if our saucers are not full. Ah, mm -hmm. water, need that. That's right, um, we need that, that's right. <laughs> need that, right? So if our sources are not full, we don't have anything to give from our cup. And so how do we keep our, how do we keep our cups full, especially in times like this, right? Mm -hmm. um, one is with school. It is the teacher's job, it is the school's job to make sure that your children are getting through this remote learning, this time at home, you are there to facilitate the process. Right. If your advice to carry the one is not working well in this age of new math, <laughs> then re reach back out to the school and see what resources they have because the DOE is offering tutoring. There's somebody at the school that can help you. That's one. Two, at the end of this, your child is not going to remember whether or not you knew how to do the new math right? Your child is going to remember the time that you spent with them, the time that you were present with them. Mm -hmm. And so for some moms in, in a two bedroom apartment um, where there are, you know, five, seven people in an apartment, how do you find time for yourself? It could be that at 10 o'clock when everything kind of shuts down, you got to go take a walk outside, mm -hmm. right? You walk around, to put your mask on, put the gloves on, walk around the block. Right. right. It could be that you put your phone in while you're washing dishes, listen to Beyonce, Mary J. Blige, because what Mary J. What Mary if Mary Blige, Mary can't get you through it, that's a whole other, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, right. If you don't have a friend to call, right? If there's not a family member that you can call, New York City is offering free telehealth services for with connect will connect you to a mental health professional that can help you talk through some things, mm -hmm. right? So the, the most important thing is how am I present in this moment and what supports do I have? And I think for parents who are feeling overwhelmed, it can be hard to think about 
what supports do I have? But maybe it means taking out a piece of paper and a pen and just listing down, who can I call? Right. Right. And I think, you know, making ourselves, uh, availing ourselves of those opportunities right. um, and using the services that are out. Uh, New York City also has Thrive NYC, which is connecting um, people to mental health professionals, as well as people at the school. So there are school counselors, just, you know, resources. Right. Tapping, yeah. into, tapping into the village. Tapping, tapping into, into the, the village. Into the village, which is what mm -hmm. this is all about. Doc, Dr. Moses, we got a question that came in from a gentleman named Al Harris. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, how do you deal with the stress that comes with a knowing a coworker who passed away, mm -hmm. right? Like, so this is, when, it's, when, this, when this virus has, is made real in your life by somebody mm -hmm. close to you who passes away, and you're not even able to grieve properly. Um, how do we give them the proper respect during this time? You know, as a, as, as a minister of the gospel, um, you know, what 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 say you on a on a topic like that? And the people who are dealing with with that type of grief. Well, the first thing I say is embrace the grief. We don't want to act like it's not there, that you're not going through something. We embrace the grief of what we are going through. And we know that this is a new normal because we are having funerals uh, without, you know, hugs and, and contact. And the human contact is very much needed when you are grieving. And uh, we have burials and nowhere to put the body. So this is real. But you embrace the grief. So there are seven stages of grief. Mm -hmm. And no one can tell you um, how long it's going to last what order is going to come in, whether or not it's going to repeat. So no one can really tell you how to grieve. But when this happens, um, if it's a, what I call on a normal level of grief that you can get through it on your own, then you can look at these uh, seven stages and see where you fit into each one and how you remember uh, your loved one. One of the stages that, um, that they, it used to be five and then they added another one. And that last one is saying uh, that you can work through this. So how do I work through this with somebody that I loved and cared about? And we take a look at that person and see how we can make that person, something about that person, a legacy in our lives or in the world so that we can remember this person was put on earth. Now, what I say as a minister is that we are all put on this earth for a purpose. Some people finish their purpose in two years. Some people finish their purpose in 16 years. Jesus finished his purpose in 33 years and some finish their purpose in 90 years. So when your purpose is done, you have completed your assignment on this earth. But because man is spiritual and spirit was never born, can never die, that we believe that that spirit of the man is going to live somewhere. And that spirit of that person on your job, um, I'm sure you can say that he did something to fulfill his purpose. And now the spirit of that man, you can take on the good. And that can become a part of your spirit as well. Right. So would you carry on the good part of that person's legacy while he was here on this earth, but knowing that he fulfilled his purpose, his timing was not our timing. As a minister, uh, the Bible says that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, a thousand years. So technically, Jesus only been dead two days. So we believe that when you see your friend again, it's going to be like 10 minutes. Mm. So we don't have to worry as much. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 And, I, and I think that, that that does help. And people, I think, just having to tap into your, your spirituality, whatever mm -hmm. your belief is, whatever your religion is, um, whatever, whatever centers you spiritually to tap into that you know, during these moments and times of grief. Um, and, you know, and, and, and we can we can have some fun during this time, right? I mean, you know, we're on lockdown, but there's, as you talked earlier about happy thoughts, right? Yeah. Dion, help tell the audience a little bit about some of the happy thoughts, the things that have been going on that, you know, we'll make sure people know about. You know, there's, there's a lot of good things that have been happening that bring joy and light into our lives. Um, tell us about some of the things and some of the things that are coming up. And have created community, right? So we're just talking 
So um, thank God for black Twitter. Um, the <laughs> baby face and Teddy Riley um, comp battle last night, the yes. two battles, right? So like there's that, there's been D nice, there's been Quest Love, there's been some of my favorite female DJs, Monday Blue, um, I'm Remarkable, She Rock, like every day you can tap into social media for good and you can find a community that is just engaging in some active joy. You can do yoga, you can go online and get some fitness classes, or you okay. can dance, right? right. And so um, a couple of weeks ago, I think Jazzy Jeff and um, Bismarck did a DJ, they were playing music together. I was in here clean, I called the clean dancing, clean dance, supposed to be clean in my house, clean dancing for like 10 hours. Wow. Um, the music was loud. It was a beautiful day outside and just and it just felt really good. Today is the half of my print shirt. Today is the anniversary of his passing. And so we get to have, when we end this call at eight o'clock, CBS is gonna do a celebration of his life, but more bigger than that and even more important, Brooklyn's own DJ Spinner on Saturday. Come on. Is gonna put on that, that, that Prince Michael battle that, that you look for every single year. So you'll have an opportunity to dance for five hours. And I, I just wanna go back to what Dr. Moses said, like, our, our people have been here before, right? Like the, 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 the trauma that's in our DNA from us being enslaved here, we already know we have everything we need to get to the other side of this, yes. right? One of the things that has always kept us is our ability to celebrate and have joy, right? And I've been talking a lot about weaponizing my joy against anything that would see it, it change a loss, right? Yes. And so when I am, when I am, when I'm dancing, when I'm singing, if I'm putting on little heads because Hezekiah get it in, right? I am, my joy is just emanating from me and it's in my house and it's surrounding my children and nothing's going to come between me and my joy. And so one of the things that I do when I am feeling down, because I, because this is this is what's happening right now, is I'm I will stop and and make a list of things that I'm grateful for, right? And I think that that it's a simple thing, but it's something that if I'm feeling a little gray, a little down, I make mm. a list of things that I'm grateful for. My mama, my sister, my four amazing nephews, my sisters, my sister friends, right? Mm. My colleagues, the ability to talk, move, the fact that I woke up today. Right. Um, just like the things that I'm water, <laughs> the things that I'm <laughs> grateful for. Um, and it, it seems like it could seem like a simple thing, but but it changes your your brain chemistry. The same thing that Dr. Moses talked about with with mindfulness. Stress can live right where breath is present. So we breathe. We take moments. Um, dance. Dance with your children. Mm. Right. Dance with them. I know my kids when I start when my kids put on. Um, pop smoke because I'm hip, I'm lit, I'm lit, right? I know who pop smoke is, but then I'm gonna come right back at you with some Raekwon. I'm gonna come right back at you with some, with some jam. I'm gonna come right back at you with some Dougie. And then mm. we're like, we're battling, right? So like dance with your kids. Mm. Talk to them about what you did when you were younger. I'm just sharing a memory of going across the street, my sister and I, to Louis, the corner store before they were bodegas and buying pickles. Remember those pickles we used to get in wax paper? Right. <laughs> and I'm like, that, that first bite with the, with the juice, talk to your kids about things that you did when you were young, mm -hmm. right? Talk about those some right. of those happy childhood memories that you had. Talk about their things that they did when they were young, right? Yes, um, yes. Just, just find a way, make it a practice. So right. no matter how hard it may be, first remember, we came from people who made it through times tougher than this. Come on. Right? And then right. two, um, joy is our birthright. Mm. Right? And That's it's free. Right. <laughs> you ain't got the, you, you ain't, joy is our birthright. And it is as yeah. simple as paper and pen or right. elaborate as this big Michael P Prince party, Zoom party I'm going to do with my friends. Right? Yes. Um, so just, just, just go back to what you did when you reconnect to those things that made you happy. Reconnect to what Langston Hughes calls your heart your heart mem your heart song your right. passions your dreams dust those off bring those back out shake them up right you might have to remix them a little bit present them with your to your children give them permission to access theirs um this COVID-19 is going to be a blip in time right. um and we need to it, it is it is serious it is killing people we are losing loved ones and friends and 
we need to acknowledge that this is a blip in time and we gonna be all right on the That's other right. side of this. That's right. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> and you and you and you mentioned you mentioned the uh, the uh, DJ spinner. So for anybody who does not know, I want to re I want to reinforce that Free this promo. Saturday <laughs> promo this Saturday <laughs> night from five to ten o'clock is gonna be one of the baddest parties you've ever seen. Uh, if you've not experienced it, it's it's it was called the Prince versus Michael Jackson. Yeah. But it is a celebration of the life and the music of Prince and Michael. All of the songs are Prince and Michael. There's mm -hmm. not one song that's played that you decide you're gonna sit down. The, mm -hmm. you, you're hearing from two of our most brilliant artists, and you will laugh, you will dance, <laughs> it will run all through your body. Um so please, Ray, DJ Spinner, go on Instagram Brooklyn's Live. Own Brooklyn's DJ own. Spinner. I put that in the front. That's right, with Spike <laughs> Lee. And so if you've not experienced it, um, you know, this is them doing it virtually. But trust me when I tell you, you're going to love it. Dr. Moses, I would ask you, right, you've got two high-achieving daughters, right, and went on to just do amazing things. And, you know, what are some of the, what are some of the suggestions that you would give? I mean, how do you raise two daughters who, who go on to graduate from Ivy League institutions in doctoral programs, setting those kinds of expectations. There's some stuff that you had in the water in your house. <laughs> tell, us a, tell us a little bit about that. And what are the things that you do with your daughters that, that brings you joy, as Dion, Dion talked about? Um, tell us about your family. Well, uh, raising children is time sensitive to all my parents out there. There is no do-overs. Uh, I often tease parents and say, you know, if you mess up, you're going to have to have another one and start all over. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can't go back and do it all over again. Every, every, every day counts. So um, I started off, uh, before I had kids, I was a youth leader in a church. And I didn't know what I was doing when they gave me that position. So the only thing I knew was education. I came here to New York with $15 and a one-way bus ticket and said wow. I was getting an education. And that's a story within itself. Mm. And then I uh, got the bachelor's, then got the master. So when I started as the youth leader, the only thing I knew was let me help kids get through college. But before I could help them get through college, they had to get through all the rest of the places. So I really, on a spiritual note, felt like because of all of the time I invested with other people's kids, God just helped me with mine. Mm -hmm. And um, for all you parents out there, you just have have expectation for your kids. If nobody else has expectation, you have expectation. Sure. By the time my kids were in the fourth grade, I couldn't do the math that they were doing. <laughs> and um, I remember standing over them saying, acting as if I knew the math they was doing. They didn't know that I didn't know. But the mere fact, because I was standing over them and I would say, is that the right answer? Let me see that. Then I would say, erase that five, make that five a better looking five. That five shouldn't look like that. But mm -hmm. in their minds, they think I knew the answer to the math question. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was about me just being, um, having expectations and making sure that they did everything they needed to do. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, and, and parents, finding the right school that is the right fit for your mm. Mm. Because you put your child in an institution where it's just not the right fit. And there are personality conflicts between adults and children. Where an adult, you know, a lot of the training I do, I do professional development for teachers because when teachers have unresolved issues, they can meet a kid and then there's a trigger <laughs> and then it sends them somewhere else. So my daughters uh, went to uh, Frederick Douglass Academy in Harlem because that's the one school that the Ivy League colleges was taking a look at because they don't come to a lot of our schools in our New York area. So that one particular school they went to and the principal had expectations that every child, Mr. Banks, would go to college on scholarship. Mm -hmm. He had guidance counselors, but then he had college career counselors. He had three of them for a school of 200 kids, three college in Korea. And he taught me an awful lot about um, getting kids. He said, if your child goes to an Ivy League, they'll probably go for free. Because even if you make $100,000, that's still a lot of, that's not a lot of money in the rich man's world. Mm, and mm. they still be able. So just having expectation. Now me personally, Mr. Banks, my kids had to bring home AIDS. 
That was my expectation. Right. So that means I had to put my work in if I wanted A's. And I'm not telling all parents that you need to do what I did, but I had an expectation if somebody else could get an A, you can get one too. And I didn't push or make it hard for them. I just put my work in by sitting there, acting as if I was doing homework. And you, when you're a parent, your life belongs to you and your children. So you run the streets, you be in activities, they're in activities. So uh, for those of you that are going through, if you could just, when school starts again, or even if you can do it electronics, join certain things in your child's school. Right. When, when you are present, people treat your kid different. Right. When, when they don't see a parent, sometimes that kid may get pushed to the side. But if they know that you're going to come, they treat you differently. I That's remember right. having an incident where the person, the security uh, safety officer didn't know who I was. And when I took my kids to school, I was coming every day because the principal told me this is a parent friendly school. So I'm coming every day because I'm one of those overprotective parents and I'm bringing <laughs> things. And uh, one that by the third time, the, security, the safety officer said, Ms. Moses, are you gonna make this a habit? And I said, <laughs> as long as my children are in this building, I am mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I went to the principal and the principal, you know, said something to her and she said, Mr. Banks, when she saw me the next day, Dr. Moses, how are you doing? I said, no, you don't get to do Dr. Moses today. Every parent is to be treated with this respect. That's right. That's so right. My kids don't like working. That's what I said. Did not like working, but they right. love school. So That's right. they went to a uh, bachelor's, then uh, they went my uh, daughter that's now a doctor, she graduates this year. She's going to Northwestern University of right. Medicine. Yeah, and, um, here we go. <laughs> she uh, was a high licensed high school chemistry teacher. I was so excited. I was like, hey, you're gonna get a job. You got a job. <laughs> 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 Two years and then uh, D, she decided, I'm going back to school, get another master's. She had a master's in education. Get another one in biology, I'm going to medical school. Right, you know, right, right. But kids get to do that. They yes. get to make choices where we well, didn't. We had to well, go to our job. You, you, you put your children into the position um, to have choices. And there's, there's nothing better. <laughs> um, and that happened as a result of uh, all the work that was put in very early on. Very and holding early. school, finding the right uh, fit in terms of a school, as you said, is very important. Very holding true. those schools accountable. It's a lot easier to hold schools accountable when you're involved. Yeah. And, um, and to the degree that they get to know you and they see how active and engaged you are, that is really, really important. W one of the things that I, I want to ask you, Dion, is the fact that you, you, you've also raised two sons. Um, you know, we created these Eagle Academies to try to focus on what's happening with our, with our young men, right? And so, you know, I, we have a parent who, who asked, she said, I have a teenage son who already doesn't like to express his emotions. Mm -hmm. And now that we are home, uh, she said, I'm more, I'm, I'm more concerned about his inability to open up and that it will get worse. Right. Uh, what is one thing that I can do to encourage my son to open up about his feelings during this difficult time? Um, so the first thing I would say is our, our young men have been, going back to the word condition, conditioned mm -hmm. to, um, to believe that being vulnerable and, and having access to your emotions um, makes them less than a man. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about breaking conditioning, right? Um, how do we, we and, and I'm, and I'm going to say we, we as a people have allowed our, our young men mm -hmm. to be looked at as monsters, right? So we've allowed them to be dehumanized, right? Um, what do we do? So how, how, do we, how do we support them in being reconnected to who they were? before the, word, the world told them that they were monsters. Um, what kind of relationship do you have with your son? Have, have you been vulnerable with him? Mm. Um, and are you expecting, because you now want closeness and intimacy that that's gonna happen because you want it, right? Um, wait, right before this hit, I had a circle of young men at a school in East New York 
and we talked about this is when um when Kobe passed. How did they feel when Kobe passed? Yeah. And I remember the last week, um, Principal Me talking about people would be surprised to hear young men say, "I love you." Like I'm I'm never surprised at that. Like my I love boys. Like the, everybody who knows me knows I'm a boy champion. I love boys. Um, mm -hmm. But during this circle. A few of the young men had experienced loss, like one lost his sister. And he said, I didn't know how to feel then, mm -hmm. right? And so I think we've also taken on the assumption that they don't want to talk about those things. My sister who has my four nephews has amazing relationships with her son, exclusive of my brother-in-law, because from young, she got them used to talking about their feelings. And so it could be that you have to go back and start at the beginning Mm -hmm. you know what are you thinking and listen I think our kids also know when we're not listening because we're distracted whether it's an electronic distraction or a mental distraction our kids know when we're not listening so what does listening look like like what does mm -hmm. real genuine listening look like for you mm -hmm. right and 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 make it a make it a process and don't expect that he's going to sit down with you tonight and say ma so ever since I was 14 years old I've been feeling right Right. But start it small. How are you doing today? Again, go back to like who you were as a child. Right. Bring out pictures, right? Show photos of old family members. My, my, um, my dad's birthday is coming up this weekend. My dad transitioned a few years ago. And so we're going to spend some time telling old people, old, my old daddy stories and my kids' peepa stories, right? So I think, and I know I have, I have two sons and you know, when they don't want to talk, they don't want to talk, but I make sure they always know I want to listen. Um, since this has started, my uh, my 20 year old who can go into his room and I not see him for like two weeks um, <laughs> um, has been laying like the other night he laid across my bed and we watched the movie together. No talking. Just I was there. He knew why I was there. He came and that was it. You know, right. it's just like look for the little things like look for the little things also. Does he come in the kitchen and have him help you do some cooking, do some cleaning? Um, maybe not cleaning, but st sit down, learn how to play one of these games. Like I, you know, I'm an Atari kid, um, mm. <laughs> you know, meet him where he is. I'll, you know, like meet him where he is. If you can That's stand right. the smell in the room, go in his room or bring him out. Cause um, I can't always stand the smell in the room. Right. <laughs> Allow him to see you vulnerable and willing to listen. Right. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. We, we're getting closer to the end here. Uh, Dr. Moses, I'm just going to ask you, to uh, give us a final word, a word again for our moms, our dads out there again who are who are, who are dealing with all the issues. What's a closing word uh, that you would want to leave uh, with the audience? Uh, I would believe that I just need everybody to be patient with yourself. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with others. Mm -hmm. We all get through this, and uh, your past is your experience. So we don't live in the past, but we use it as a reference point when, you, when we need it. Your past is your experience. Your future is your challenge. Mm. But your present day is your responsibility. So the only thing you can take care of is not the past. You don't have to look too far into the future. Your responsibility is for the present. What can I do right now in the present? The serenity prayer always talks about that we just need to be okay with things we cannot change. But then we get the courage to change the things that we can change. So your present day responsibility, try to enjoy life in spite of what's going on. And children are resilient. Children feel what you feel. And if you can keep a positive mindset, the children will not go into a mental breakdown if they see that their parents are okay. That's right. So in my book, The Joy of Single Parent, it was not written um, just for single parenting. It's a parenting book. But one of the chapters in there is about crisis healing. Because when you are a parent, you are a leader, whether you like it or not. 
and everybody is looking at you. So sometimes when we're going through, we have to crisis heal so that we can make sure that our children are okay. Because at the end of the day, our job is to make sure that our children are self-sufficient so they can take care of themselves. Absolutely. So patient Thank you. Yourself and enjoy life. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Dion, final word uh, from you, final thought, anything you want to share as we get ready to wrap up? Yeah, I want to echo again, Dr. Moses says, just be gentle with yourself, right? I think at the start of this, a lot of us thought we were going to, you know, create seven streams of income. I was going to write my book. I was going to do my dissertation. I was going to build an attachment to my house. Mm. And those things might not be happening. Be gentle with yourself, right? Mm. Um, listen to your body. Drink your water. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Say it again. That's right. Listen to your body. Drink your water. Rest when you need to rest. Um, you said it the other day, Banks. This is, we can look at this. We can choose to look at this time as a gift. A gift to do some self-reflection, right? Mm -hmm. A gift to go inside. A gift to, to clean out the things that need to be clean. Get clear. Um, and toxic communications and toxic relationships, right? Um, and just really be clear about about who you about who you are and who you want to be. Be gentle. Be gentle with yourself. I think that's yes. a, be gentle. Be kind. Be kind. Be the, be kind to you the way that you are kind to others. That's right. That's right. And I want to thank you both for that. I, I want to say uh, that um, for me, um, I have taken uh, this COVID crisis uh, and seen it for myself as an opportunity, mm -hmm. um, an opportunity to be still, an opportunity to reflect. Um, and I've taken a, uh, I've set an expectation for myself mm -hmm. uh, that I will come out better, wiser, mm -hmm. stronger uh, than when I went into this. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's about the mindset that we bring to it. Take this time to read, take this time to study the word, take this time to re-engage with your family and your children and your friends. We've been given uh, plenty of time. Um, so you don't wanna wallow in some level of misery. Sure, we certainly should grieve. I lost a cousin last week. Um, I don't think any of us are gonna come out of this unscathed. Everybody's got somebody that they're connected to who is passing. Uh, and we are gonna continue to see that for the foreseeable future. But even in spite of that, we ought to accept that life is a gift. Um, see each day as a blessing. My mother used to always say to me, when people would say, to, tomorrow's not promised to you, my mother would say, the rest of the day is not promised to you. And I try to live my life in that way. Um, and so I wanna leave um, everybody with the uh, serenity prayer, as you pointed out, Dr. Moses, right? Which is asking God to please grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, mm -hmm. the courage to ch change the things that I can, mm -hmm. and the wisdom to know the difference. Right. And so keep that on your mind, keep that in your spirit um, as you continue to move forward. We're gonna continue these conversations. Uh, we are gonna be back here again next week, Tuesday at the same time, seven o'clock. We're inviting you all to please join us as we continue this conversation to kind of, to try and help to support our families and our parents. Uh, we are also responding to the needs of our young men. And this Friday, um, we'll be launching our first uh, youth summit for our young men uh, as we try to engage them in real conversation. And that'll be led by some other members of our organization and the young men themselves where their voices will be heard. So we're gonna ask that you follow us on that. Um, all that is, be is posted and being posted on our, on our websites and our social media. Um, now. And so again, um, God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Just know that we're going to be all right. We're going to come through this and let's come through it together and stronger and better. Yeah. Have a great Thank evening, you. everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank so you. Thank you. Be well. Thank you.